In this video, I will also be going over the latest news about a possible $200 increase in your monthly social security benefits. So be sure to stay until the end of this video. And if you believe that the social security benefits should be increased $200 a month, then let's get this video to 1,000 likes. But first everybody, here's what you have to know about your third stimulus check. The IRS says your third stimulus payment should start showing up in your bank account today. If you're not seeing a pending deposit in your bank account yet, but the IRS get my payment tool is showing an April 14th payment date. Don't worry folks, your stimulus check should be arriving very very soon. On the other hand, some people don't even see a payment date when they check the Get My Payment tool. But it is very likely that the IRS has not begun processing your stimulus check, if that's the case. But remember that there are many Americans that did receive a stimulus payment without the IRS Get My Payment tool even updating. So I really hope that your folks get your $400 stimulus checks very very soon. But if you did not receive your check before the end of today, please leave a comment down below. I will do my best in answering all of you guys' questions. And any questions that you have surrounding your social security benefits and even your unemployment benefits. The whole goal of this channel is to provide you with the most up-to-date and reliable stimulus check news. So I will definitely be doing more research and I'll do my best in figuring out why your stimulus check is being delayed. Now according to the US Treasury Department, more than 156 million stimulus payments have already been sent out. I just don't understand why so many people, why so many of you guys are being left out of receiving a stimulus payment. It is absolutely absurd. The IRS is either backlogged or an error is happening. The IRS says you've received SI, SSDI, or survivors. You should have received your check last week. But it seems that the IRS prioritized getting stimulus checks out to taxpayers first. I personally believe that the Social Security and other federal program beneficiaries, like if you're on SI or SSDI, should have received a stimulus check before anybody else. Before anybody else. You guys are the ones that need it the most. But the IRS did say this. Most SI, SSDI, and survivors do not need to do anything to receive a payment. But the big question is, how soon could you receive a fourth stimulus check? Well everybody, millions of Americans support a fourth round of stimulus. As of today, 53 House Representatives and 21 Senators strongly believe that three stimulus checks is not enough. A fourth stimulus check is by multiple lawmakers. And now, President Joe Biden has to include a fourth stimulus payment or recurring monthly stimulus checks into his new infrastructure package. What do you think about this everybody? Would you rather receive a larger on time stimulus check or smaller monthly payments? Leave your thoughts down in the comments. Now this past Monday, Vice President Kamala Harris and Joe Biden met with a group of bipartisan senators to negotiate some provisions of the upcoming bill. Joe Biden is hoping to draw support from both sides of the aisle to pass his infrastructure plan. There are recent polls that show most Americans do support monthly stimulus checks. The majority of Americans want $2,000 monthly stimulus payments for the duration of the crisis. Well everybody, another round of stimulus checks is definitely needed. The crisis is still negatively impacting millions of Americans nationwide. So many people are struggling to even meet their basic needs, like food and water. President Joe Biden is aiming to pass the stimulus bill or the next infrastructure plan by this summer. And it is expected to cost more than $3 trillion. The White House does hope to gain some support from Republicans on this next infrastructure package. It is possible that a fourth stimulus check would arrive in July or August, since the Biden administration wants to pass a new infrastructure plan during the summer. Jen Psaki, the White House press secretary, did say this. The American Rescue Plan was an emergency relief package. We needed it to get done as soon as possible to get this crisis under control, to get relief checks out to Americans that need the most. And we want to pass this infrastructure package by summer. Paycheck. frontline personnel as we said and stressed it often to a breaking point and we have seen the economic damage millions have lost their jobs as a result of pandemic restrictions we're here today to understand some important issues the united states preparedness and initial efforts leading into the covid 19 pandemic the initial federal response and to identify recommendations to improve federal preparedness for future pandemics and other public health threats we owe it to those Americans who did die as a result of COVID-19, to their families and countless others who are struggling to make ends meet 
to make this a serious nonpartisan oversight effort. Looking at the steps the federal government took in the initial days of the pandemic, we've got to learn from the experience for the future. To that end, I think there are three issues important to address. First, CDC surveillance systems and the lack of testing limited our early response. We know that China irresponsibly downplayed the initial severity of COVID-19. Uh, it's my view, there's no question about that. That presents questions about our ability to work with global partners, particularly China, to identify and combat pandemics in their nascent stages. But how did we do in the United States at recognizing and communicating COVID-19 cases, symptoms, and deaths once the pandemic reached our shores? The CDC can only communicate and address the issues it knows about and understands. In many instances, what we found out is that COVID-19 cases manifested in patient symptoms and were ultimately the cause of death, that information was slow to reach the CDC. Why was that? Instead of seeing real-time data, CDC was only seeing fragmented historical data. Adding to surveillance challenges, diagnostic testing was slow to, to develop and then slow to scale up to the level required by the pandemic. But why was that? It's critical that we enable state and local public health officials to communicate effectively and directly to the CDC. We also must have the capability to scale up testing when needed. We know those things. We've got to talk about how we can do that better. In a future pandemic, this could mean the difference between quick life-saving decisions or confusion and the needless loss of life. Second, who was in charge? Where was the accountability? This is something I look forward to asking some of our distinguished panel about today because they've had a lot of experience in how these things are managed. The recurring narrative in interviews with former government officials like the ones we have today. And that you and your employer pay. That means that Social Security does not add one nickel to the deficit. It has its own source of funding. The wars in Iraq and Afghanistan that the Republicans forgot to pay for added trillions to the deficit and national debt, not Social Security. Now, the truth is that while we do not have a social security crisis today, we do have a retirement crisis. And that is a very serious problem. All over this country, millions of Americans, people who have worked their entire lives, are wondering if they will ever be able to retire with any shred of dignity. The sad truth is that, as a result of the collapse of our middle class and declining wages, more than half of older workers between the ages of 55 to 64 have no retirement. That's all the news in this video, everybody. If any of you guys found this video useful and helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell.